and a credit limit will we get it. negative 30 this is what you would do for postpaid they'd start out at zero they make a call and it would move their credit into the negative it would do like negative 10 cents after they made the first call and before they get to their credit limit it's programmed to 5 before so at negative 25 it would notify me that they're getting close to their credit limit and once they hit their credit limit it will tell them that they're out of credit and they need to add more and it won't let them make any more calls or have any more calls incoming that's how I do it on my unlimited plans so that a hacker couldn't get the account and just call up too much they'd get stopped at $30 worth of calls now if you wanted to do it prepaid you could do $30 right there and just set the credit limit to zero and at five, once they reach five dollars on the credit, it's going to notify you still, let you know that they're getting close. Then you can add more credit for them, or however you want to do it. It's up to you. We'll change it back. This is if you want it to send it back to zero at the end of the month. This is obviously the day you want the credit card charge. Once you get your payment gateway built into it, this will come in handy. And I put this in there in case they pay you by check or some other method. You don't want it to be charging the credit card. You just choose no. And this is if you have a customer sign up form. They could put their transfer number in, whatever number they want me to pour it over for them. Or if they want a new number and you have a API built in with your VoIP provider that shows them what DIDs are available. I use VoIP Innovations and they have all that and I use it with my sign up form. And there's our new user. Now we can go ahead and create a DID for that user. We can just make one up. Choose the customer. And the board provider we created right here. Let me see where I'm at. Now we can go ahead and create a phone for that customer. And this is so they can get into the voicemail over their phone, or they can use the uh, web portal voicemail, and I'll show you that here in a minute. If their area code is 1111, they could just dial 7 digits and you can put 111 here and it will append that to it if they dial any number that's 7 digits. Network down number is if they lose internet at their house or their business or the server, easy ITSP would automatically forward their calls to this new number. So it could be that and it'll send all incoming calls to that number which could be their cell phone 311 is if you have 311 in your area you can input that in for them DND &D, on or off no yes they can also do this from their phone as a feature code if they want their number to forward all the time it's like network down but when the internet's working and then serial MAC address of their ATA their phone and this helps if you have multiple provisioning servers or SIP servers or to either let you know that it is provisioned. And then, being this is a business customer, we can go ahead and create a ring group for them. Ring groups are good for like sales and customer service. We'll just create one for sales. 
and you give it an extension, when you dial that extension, it's going to call all the phones in the ring group. So we'll just call it 810 and enable it. And we'll see, we already had a test one in there to the sales team. And now we need to add phones to it. And we'll add the phone that we just created. Now it doesn't make sense to only have one phone in there for the ring group, but I'm just showing you how this is done. You'd want to create at least two phones to put in the ring group, and they both ring. Now extension maps, this is what I did to make easy ITSP work for hosted PDX. One second. <laughs> okay. Now extension maps is what I did for two customers on hosted PDX on easy ITSP to be able to have the same extension. Like two different customers could both have 800 extensions on the same telephone server being asked for this. Now you can't create two 800 extensions in SIP.com so I tricked it to be able to work in easy ITSP or no beer or no difference. Well, we'll just go ahead and give it 800 also. Normally you would just dial the DID of the phone if you want to reach them. Or the username if they don't use the DID. And I can show you some settings here. Four on one. This is a universal four on one number for everybody. I was using Google's four on one, but they're not in business no more. So you might need to find another one for your customer. Some of these are obvious. You won't want to change any of these. Dial parameters. Incoming rate charge. That's what you would want to charge for incoming calls. And if there's not a rate in the rate card, I was just having it automatically calling out SIP and then how much to charge in the uh, regex format and what chunk to use on the rates. Because I didn't want them to block them off for me. That's how I needed it. And this is if the phones need to be loaded in the, the web portal. You shouldn't have to worry about this. And how many rows you want the tables to display in easy RTSP. You can change it if you want to see more or less. Now, we'll go ahead and log into the customer folder and show you what that looks like. And it's basically the same. You got your, they can see their outgoing calls and their incoming calls. And they can see all their CDR records. And Crown archives them monthly. It creates new MySQL tables for each month. And they'll be able to go through here and see each month's records. And the CDR no rate, that's for all calls made or coming in that there's not a rate assigned for them. In account info, they can modify certain settings here. Certain settings they can't. For administration reasons. And they can view what phones they have, view voicemails for that phone, play and delete them from the web portal here. And they can also see their ring groups, cinching maps, and what the IDs are in.